A lot of football talk on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. We'll talk about why MJ Griffin is primed for a big season in 2023. We'll also talk about some portal options at tight end and offensive line for the Cardinals heading into next year. With that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. Want to take this time to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder: the Locked On the Louisville Podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week. Your team every day. As I mentioned, a lot of football talk on today's episode of the show. We'll begin by discussing why safety MJ Griffin is primed for a big season in 2023. We'll also talk about some tight end and offensive line uh, possibilities through the portal. Uh, Tight ends, we'll talk about uh, Casey Kelly from Mississippi and Khalil Brantley from Miami. And then offensive line, we'll talk about um, Rutgers tackle um, Willie Tyler. Um, Let's see, actually... Overall offensive lineman, Willie Tyler, because I think he can play on the interior as well. Texas A&M offensive lineman, Matthew Wyckoff, and Appalachian State offensive lineman, Troy Everett. So a lot of players to talk about. I apologize if it gets a little bit overwhelming, but that's just the state of where the program is at. It's going to be an exciting weekend for the Louisville football program. The spring game coming up, there will be a lot of possible transfers on campus um for that game and for the weekend but before we get into the portal i want to talk about a player that has been turning heads in the spring that is safety mj griffin uh six foot one native of uh michigan played his first three seasons at temple before transferring to the cardinals program ahead of last season over the course of the year played more as of late recorded 45 tackles 23 of them being solo tackles one pass deflection, one forced fumble, and two interceptions. So um, overall, MJ Griffin split time at the safety position with players like Kendrick Duncan Jr., um, Josh Minkins, so on and so forth. But from the talks in the spring, um, I think multiple analysts – um, within the Louisville media, uh, Keith Wynn, Keith Winnie, I, I apologize. Uh, I always forget how to say that last name, but he has said some good things about MJ Griffin. Jody Dimling of Cardinal Authority has said some solid things. And then some other people that I've talked to have raved about the spring uh, performances that MJ Griffin has put forward. Um, and he was a player last season that I was pretty much campaigning for to get more playing time because when he was on the field, you could tell Louisville's defense just looked different when he and Quincy Riley played more snaps. And you saw that when they played more towards the back half of the year. Um, Looking at the game logs of MJ Griffin over the past season, um, up until... The first couple games of the year uh, didn't play until South Florida game, had a tackle. Uh, same thing with the Boston College game. And then he got some more opportunity against Virginia, had five tackles, had an interception in that game. Also had an interception um, against Pittsburgh where he had four tackles. And then in the next handful of games, nine against Wake Forest, six against James Madison, um, five against Clemson, nine against Kentucky, so on and so forth. Um had a pass deflection against Cincinnati. I am really, really intrigued by the possibilities that are, um, you know, at the hands of the defense coordinators, Ron English and Mark Hagan, of what they can do in the defensive secondary. Obviously, you know, you have some guys that you brought in, like Gilbert Frierson from Miami, who I think probably projects to be more of an outside linebacker hybrid rather than, rather than a safety, kind of like Ben Perry. But you have a guy like Josh Minkins, who is back, a veteran from the 502 that had a solid season, has kind of battled injuries throughout his time, uh, with the Cardinals program, but still nonetheless um, in an opportunity that I believe um, is going to have a solid role. MJ Griffin, I think, is primed to be one of the breakout players, 
not only for the Cardinals in 2023, but the ACC as a whole. Um, I like his ability to get after the football, has a great understanding of, you know, watching offenses um, unfold as the plays go on. I think that, um, you know, he is a player that um, I ultimately believe is going to be looked upon to be a leader for this Cardinals defense as they've lost leaders from this defense like Dorian Jones, um, Yasir Abdullah, Yaya Diaby, Monty Montgomery, so on and so forth, right? So um, ultimately, I think that they're going to rely on players like Josh Minkins, like MJ Griffin, to um, be the vocal leaders of this team, especially with there being some younger guys at the position in the linebacking core. So um, you're going to see a lot of uh, quarterbacks of the defense in the back half of the secondary for the Louisville Cardinals in this one. So um, ultimately, I I think that there is a lot of momentum for the six-foot-one safety. Obviously, had to get acclimated with the team, uh, with the playbook um, to start the year last season. Uh, Didn't play a lot in the first couple games, but really came on as of late, um, especially when Kendrick Duncan uh, had to miss that game against Virginia. Uh, Griffin had a real, real uh, solid game in that role at free safety. Um, You know, Scott Satterfield said last year that he was a guy that when he got the opportunity, he made the most of it. Um, And that's essentially what you have to do. Um, He went on to say, you know, he's made great plays. He's flying all over the place. Uh, Missed a couple tackles here and there, but he's not a veteran yet. I love the way that he's pulling the trigger. And then we mentioned earlier, the two big interceptions are huge, huge interceptions for us. He's been able to make those kind of plays and he plays with a lot of energy. I think our guys, Feed off of that. That is what Scott Satterfield said back in, I believe, October of this past season, um, discussing of what MJ Griffin brings to the table. Uh, Spent a couple seasons with Temple, as I mentioned. Um, Had a career-high 66 tackles in 2021. Um, And then, obviously, this year had a career-high interceptions. He had never intercepted a pass before coming to Louisville, and now he has two under his belt. But ultimately, I think that adjusting to that Power 5 level – getting to a position where he was playing more uh, as the season went on. You're starting to hear a lot about him in spring ball as a player that has been contesting um, 50-50 balls really well, has been solid in coverage, uh, solid run defense as well. I'm really interested to see what he can bring to this defense next season. But ultimately, I keep hearing about him from people close to the program, from people um, that have been to practices, um, you know, have essentially raved about the performances that MJ Griffin has put forth. But granted, this is only spring ball. Uh, Things aren't ramped up yet. Guys are banged up with injuries. Um, It's spring ball. You can't look too much into it. But I I think it's appropriate when you consider that, um, you know, MJ Griffin had a solid end to the year last year. And then you also, you know, throw into the mix how well he has looked in the spring. I think that, you know, if this trend and this momentum continues on into, uh, you know, summer ball, into fall camp to where you're hearing his name a lot, I'm telling you, man, I really do see a situation where MJ Griffin will be one of the better defenders on the field for Louisville. Like I said, I love the energy he plays with. I love that sideline to sideline feel that we kind of got with Quinterio Cole um, a couple seasons ago for Louisville, uh, who ultimately I thought, you know, whose role he was going to replace. But I also, you know, like his ability to cover as well. Ultimately, when he came to Louisville, I was like, well, I value, you know, his game more of being a defending of the run. But now I look at it and I'm thinking he's sort of a complete safety when it comes to defending the run, when it comes to, um, you know, playing on the back end, you know, as a quarterback spy, but also in coverage as well in the slot. So I'm interested to see. Um, how Louisville is going to utilize him in this new 4-2-5 defensive package where obviously we say it once, we'll say it again, defensive versatility is the name of the game for um, the defensive backs in a position to where you are playing five defensive backs usually and you're, you're valuing more the defensive back position than you are the linebacker position. So interesting to look at it in that um, regard and how he fits with this defense is he going to have sort of the same role this year as he did last year under a new scheme under a new coaching staff that's something to look forward to but ultimately I think that this is um, a player to watch Um, MJ Griffin is a player to watch in this situation 
uh, because mm-hmm. of that momentum that he carried from the end of last season into spring ball, but also that skill set he brings to the table and now being a veteran for this group, um, you know, in college for four years now, I, I think that uh, the sky is the limit for what MJ Griffin can do this upcoming year. So, um, but for the remainder of the show, we're going to talk about some possible players that Louisville could look to add in the portal. We'll begin with the tight end position. Casey Kelly, Khalil Brantley, we'll discuss here in just a second. Excuse me. Before we do that, excuse me again. Got the hiccups. Um, I want to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Grand Slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. There's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Place that first bet. Get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. You can do bets everywhere from... Home run totals, um, strikeout totals per game. You know, the over-under, there are a lot of, um, you know, pretty specific bets that are fun to look at. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, heading on into the final, well, final two segments, I should say. The second segment, we're talking about two tight end prospects that will be on campus, or one was already on campus last weekend, one will be on campus this weekend. Um, Casey Kelly from Mississippi was already on campus. Khalil Brantley from Miami will be on campus this upcoming weekend for the spring game. But uh, thing to focus on here, we talked about why yesterday linebacker is a position of need. The other two positions of need, I guess you would say, are offensive line and tight end. Uh, Francis Sherman, I believe, sustained some type of an injury in spring practice. I can't confirm that, but I feel like I heard that. Um, obviously, outside of that, you have a lot of inexperience. Jamari Johnson will be a true freshman, so it's kind of unfair to truly rely too much on him, um, especially maybe right away. Um, and then other players that are still looking to rise up through the ranks as well. But ultimately, tight end is a position that I think that if, you, if you're looking at for Louisville, it's a position that... Most people knew that Louisville was going to try to address it. I wouldn't even be surprised if they looked to add multiple tight ends in this cycle in the portal. They have the scholarship availabilities to do so. Um, Jeff Brom's offense has been able to um, allow tight ends to shine, uh, see a significant role. Um, and I think that obviously in the defending the run, but also you know opening up as a pass catcher as well it's interesting because the two options that Louisville has been discussed with early on not necessarily a ton of college production you look at Casey Kelly and what he's done with Mississippi uh six foot three 255 pound native of Niagara Falls New York um played the past three seasons for Ole Miss um but Hasn't really had a ton of production to his name. I know that tight end is a position to where I think it's just now starting to be featured more in collegiate offenses. Uh, But Kelly, as a freshman, 8 for 115 and a touchdown. Um, As a sophomore, 17 for 150 and a touchdown. But this past year didn't necessarily see a lot of time. Career lows in receptions, yards, averages, um, and um, yeah, so – Three receptions for 17 yards and a touchdown. So not a lot of production to his name. Uh, 6'3", 255 pounds. Um, has played in the SEC. So you wonder um, you know, how well he could do. Only played in three regular season games for Mississippi this past season. Um, looking at why that is, whether it was injury or not. Um kind of looking into that currently um apparently spent the last four seasons at mississippi but um michael trigg and uh, caden Priestcorn uh joining the uh mississippi offense i guess means that he was the odd man out um let's see let's see yeah, so, I mean, I think it was just a matter not so much of injury, but more so of a player that just kind of got passed up in the depth chart by two pretty solid tight ends, and that you know happens to be the case. But could a change of scenery to Louisville be in the works? Could that kind of revitalize his career? Obviously, you have a lot of pass catchers here for Louisville, and I think that that's one thing to maybe look at here is that there are a lot of wide receiver options for this program. The running back committee is extremely strong. So 
you know, you have talented guys like Francis Sherman, obviously like Jamari Johnson, some other players, um, you know, Des Melton that could uh, see a role in this, um, you know, offense. Are you going to be able to have the target share for these players? Are you looking for players that can fulfill the role, but maybe not necessarily be a star because maybe we not looking to have a star at the tight end position. That's something to focus on. The other player, uh, Khalil Brantley from Miami, Definitely doesn't have that collegiate level of production. Six foot two, two hundred twenty five pound native of Opelika, Florida. Um, in twenty twenty one, had one catch for seven yards. This past year for Miami, four catches for twenty one yards and a touchdown. Um, an opportunity for Louisville um, and Coach John Heron to potentially continue that um, that pipeline into Florida which could be something to look for here when the Louisville is continuing to, you know, obviously, you know, increase that pipeline. He was a former three-star recruit rated as the number 818th best player in the, I think it's 2021 class played for North Miami Northwestern high school, which obviously is a program that Louisville is very familiar with Teddy Bridgewater and company. And then, um, you know, Michael Lee Harris is down there now, former Louisville Cardinal, um, so cool. Brantley was projected to be a depth piece for the hurricanes, but, um, ultimately decided to, um, enter the portal and, um, Louisville is now in the mix after a month of Brantley being in the portal. So this is one to potentially look for, obviously not a ton of potential. I'm sorry, not a ton of potential, not a ton of production, six, but two, 225 pounds. Um, only played in four games as a, I guess as a sophomore. Let's see, I think he redshirted his first year. Yeah, only played in one game against uh, looks like Central Connecticut State and had one catch for seven yards. And then as a redshirt freshman, um, you know, appeared in four games, never had more than one reception, um, and then had a touchdown. So uh, against Clemson, but I want to go to the recruiting profile here. I want to see something to kind of shed a little bit of light on um, this situation because I wonder, let's see, going back to his recruiting profile, looking at some of the offers that he had. Uh, no, I mean, I, I thought that maybe, um, you know, maybe he would have an offer from Purdue or from Louisville, um, but it seems like Miami, Kentucky, Maryland, Missouri, Oregon, Mississippi, Syracuse, Tennessee. He had some big time offers here. And that's something to look at. You know, he had some big time offers. Uh, so it seems like maybe you're banking on a little bit of uh, potential here as it opposed to Casey Kelly, where it's like maybe you're bringing in a veteran presence that can at least give you solid depth. Um, you know, maybe this is a situation where Louisville says, hey, look, you know, Khalil Brantley is better than, you know, maybe what we've seen on the field. There's a lot of talent there. Maybe we can unlock that and, um, you know, have a solid piece to the puzzle that is the tight end room for Louisville. But ultimately, like I said, there's going to be opportunity here for players in the portal to come to Louisville and see some solid playing time offensively at the tight end position because maybe Jamar Johnson isn't ready immediately. You know, maybe Francis Sherman isn't ready immediately, so on and so forth. You know, you're looking to add maybe one, maybe even two players at the position moving forward. Um, in the portal for the Louisville tight ends room because uh, I think that that's the one position offensively, maybe outside of just filling offensive line depth and maybe another starter at the offensive line that you're lacking that, um, you know, that quality depth. So um, Casey Kelly and Khalil Brantley are the two players that one has already visited and one is going to visit. But um, continuing on in portal talk, we'll talk about three offensive linemen that Louisville has reached out to. Two will be on visits um, and obviously we will, uh, see if actually, I'm not sure if he's going to be on a visit this weekend or not. We will take a quick look, but, um, I'm not necessarily sure. Let me, let me take a quick look real quick. I apologize for stalling. I should have already known this. Um, okay. So one is going to be on a visit for sure. Um, but before we talk about the offensive lineman, we're going to, uh, dive into, um, you know, talking about what is to come for the locked on the Louisville podcast, obviously just released a basketball portal episode. We're going to continue to talk about the visitors that will be on campus for the upcoming weekend, big portal weekend recruiting for Jeff Brom and company. So, um, 
Uh, to conclude the show, we'll talk about three offensive linemen that Louisville has shown interest in. We just talked about Vincent Lamia, the uh, Duquesne offensive lineman that committed to Louisville uh, that will uh, contend for some snaps at uh, right tackle. But um, three other players that um, Louisville is going to look to possibly add to the mix here uh, for the team um, to kind of round out offensive line recruiting. Um, there are three players, Willie Tyler, uh, Matthew Wyckoff and Troy Everett. We'll begin with the first one, Willie Tyler, uh, transferring from Rutgers, uh, six foot seven, 330 pounds. The interesting situation here is that Tyler has been all around the portal. Um, I think that he is a grad transfer now. Um, he has spent time at, I think originally committed to Texas, um, went to Syracuse, then transferred to Louisiana Monroe, uh, transferred to, um, it looks like he transferred to Syracuse, then transferred to Louisiana Monroe, transferred to Rutgers, and now is back into the portal. So this is an interesting situation. Um, it looks like Ohio State has reached out. So some solid offers out there for Tyler or some solid interest. Uh, Richard Owens, the new offensive lineman coach, um, he – recruited Tyler at Georgia Southern. Uh, he essentially said, we got pretty close. It was more than just not wanting to play in the Sun Belt and get up at a higher level of play. He reached out and the connection was still there. I know what he's about. They reached out probably three or four days after my name went in the portal and we were on the phone right away. So um, I think that this is a situation, you know, Willie Tyler will be on campus uh, this upcoming weekend, I do believe. Um, but Temple... Syracuse, Mississippi State have already gotten some official visits. So obviously Louisville getting that or one of maybe the final visits would be solid. Um, I'm not sure exactly what position he would play listed as interior, but also, um, you know, was an offensive tackle coming out of high school. So something to maybe look at here if you are the Cardinals. Obviously, it seems like the guard position is one that we're going to look at for the Cardinals to fill. Um, he played in 11 games, started nine of them at left tackle this past year. So you see a lot of the uh, that versatility in the offensive line room for uh, Willie Tyler. Uh, potentially he could, you know, compete for depth at the tackle positions, or maybe he is in starting consideration for offensive guard position. But, you know, six foot seven, over 300 pounds is very, very solid size. Another player um, that just entered the portal that Louisville has reached out is Matthew Wyckoff uh, from Texas A&M. Played a lot of games for the Aggies last year. A member of the All SEC freshman year, six foot six, three hundred thirty pounds. Started nine of those games after injury struck um, in College Station. He started at center, but it's my understanding that he could play either the guard positions as well. Uh, has three years of eligibility remaining after this upcoming year. Um, I'm sorry, after last year uh, has three years of eligibility, which that would really be something to look forward to here. If you're a Wolver, that would make a ton of sense to have that continuity. Um, you need interior offensive line help. It seems like um, at the very least, Texas A&M fans thought that he was going to be solid depth. Some thought that he was going to be a starter at the center position, but ultimately um, something's going on down there in college station. A lot of players are transferring out. It doesn't seem like he was truly overtaken on the depth chart, which I don't necessarily know that to be true, but um, it seems like um, it was more so something not going right in college station, but Wyckoff, you know, six foot six, 330 pounds, a guy that started nine games in sec play, um, and then was named to the all SEC freshman team. Obviously this would be a huge addition. You would assume with Brian Hudson starting at center that he would probably uh, be in contention to start at one of the guard positions. So something to really look forward to and would be a solid addition. The other offensive lineman we're going to talk about that the Cardinals have just offered is Troy Everett, who is getting a ton of interest. One of the best offensive linemen in the portal, um, six foot three red shirt. He'll be a red shirt sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia, six foot three, 285 pounds, uh, freshman all American second team, uh, started six games at center played in 10 of the 12, um, Let's see, only allowed one sack in 262 pass blocking snaps. Um, you know, was solid against UNC, solid against Texas A&M. Um, a player that I think also would be a, a guy that fits into that role 
of maybe sliding into a starting level position, which Louisville is needing at the guard position. Um, you know, obviously, um, I think you have Renato Brown as the penciled in starter at right tackle, Michael Gonzalez at left tackle, and Brian Hudson in the center. Uh, but you're looking to kind of fill out the interior. Um, Matthew Wyckoff and uh, Troy Everett are going to be two players that um, really could, you know, go a long way in helping this Louisville offensive line reach the level that Jeff Brom and company are looking for them to achieve. So, but obviously we're going to continue to talk about the players that will be on campus as the week goes along, but that's going to uh, conclude today's episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here pretty soon.